guys, Janet here with Radiant Wanderings. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we are talking about flying with your pet, your cat, or your dog. I've had requests for this, gosh, almost a year ago now. And I'm sorry it took me so long, but I am discussing it today. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and stay a while. And if you find anything helpful, please give a big thumbs up. And also there is a blog post in the video description below. If you need more details or wanna look something up later, I have links in there that are very useful to you. So be sure to check that out as well. All right, let's get into it. So today we are talking specifically about pets in cabin when you're flying. We're not talking about emotional support animals. Those regulations are entirely different. And we're not talking about pets in the cargo hold down below. If your pet is too large to go under the seat, that is how you will have to do it. But there are completely different regulations for that. There are embargoes on when you are able to do that. If it's too hot or too cold, you're not going to be able to transport your pet that way. If you have a certain breed of pet, you won't be able to transport them that way. And then there are specific crate regulations as well. So you'll need to go to the website and check that out for the airline that you're flying. Okay, so to fly with your pet in cabin, the first thing you need to do are check out the regulations for the country or state that you're flying to. Now for this video today, we are strictly talking about domestic travel. If you are interested in international travel, that will be next week's video. Tune in again then, hit that little notification bell. It will give you a reminder when that video is going to premiere. But for today, we are talking about domestic. However, even with domestic, certain states do have different regulations. Namely those outliers like Hawaii, probably Guam, American Samoa, Puerto Rico. I know Hawaii, you don't wanna travel with your pet because they have a quarantine for 30 to 120 days. So unless you're moving to Hawaii, <laughs> leave your pet at home. It's not a good vacation destination for them. There is a link in my blog post to the USDA site where you can select the state that you're traveling to and it will give you those exact regulations before you fly. But most states, it is not a problem and people do it every day. So let's get into the airline regulations. For today, we are discussing Delta airline regulations, but all airlines may vary slightly, so be sure to check your your airline out before you book. But most airlines require that the pet be at least 10 weeks old for domestic travel. You can have two pets in one carrier if they are the same breed and size and between 10 weeks and six months old. Or you can have a pet, a mama pet, with her litter if the litter is at least 10 weeks old and not more than six months old and they all fit in this carrier together. So if you can make that work, congratulations, you can take more than one pet. But otherwise, <laughs> one pet per person, which makes sense because they have to go underneath the seat in front of you. So that brings us to the carrier. What type of carrier are you going to have? Do you want a soft-sided, hard-sided, wheels, which are great because you can just wheel it through the terminals? Or do you want a backpack? Or do you want one with pockets so that you have a place for the leash and the food and the dog treats and the poop bags? <laughs> poop bags are very important. And also, is the carrier going to fit underneath the seat? Unfortunately, this is not cut and dry either because every airplane has a different seat height and a different seat width. So you need to check that out. The airline that you want to fly should have a listing of seat heights for various aircraft. Fortunately, since I work for an airline, I was able to test this out with the carrier that I ordered. And surprisingly, our small CRJ 200s are just 50 seater planes are tiny. It fit under those, but the larger airplanes, which I thought would be no problem, actually had shorter seat heights. So you need to check that out. Fletcher, our dog, is pretty big. He's around that 18 to 20 pound mark, which is about the biggest you can take and fit underneath the seat. So in the end, to my dismay, we had to go with a soft-sided carrier because the one with the wheels that I really wanted, the wheels and the handle take up more space and it wouldn't collapse any or it didn't have any give to go under the seat and he's a pretty big dog. If your dog's over 15 pounds, you probably need to go with a soft-sided just to be on the safe side. Now, <laughs> that gets tricky because then in the airport terminals, you have to carry your dog and it's pretty heavy. So what we tried to do, this is our hack, we got a luggage dolly and we, we rigged it up with a board and some um, what are those stretchy cable things those so then when we get off the plane 
we put his carrier on the dolly and strap it to that and pull him along so that we don't have to carry his carrier all the way through the terminals. It works, but it's not ideal. If your dog is small enough, get one with wheels, get a backpack, get something for easy transport. So before the day of travel, you need to inform the airline that you will be flying with a pet. Airlines only allow so many pets in cabin per flight. For Delta, it was four in the economy cabin and two in first class. Usually there aren't that many, but if you wanna be sure that Fido gets on, <laughs> you need to call the airline in advance and make sure his spot is reserved. You also need to remember that your pet carrier replaces your personal item because that's what's going underneath the seat in front of you. So you don't get a personal item plus a roller bag. And if you are flying in a basic economy where all you have is a personal item, then that's a problem. <laughs> that's not gonna work. So you need to read carefully which type of ticket you're buying when you prepare for pet travel. Remember to bring poop bags and a collapsible water bowl. We have one that attaches with a clip to our dog carrier. Food, treats, all of those things that your pup or your kitten might need along the way. And then another very important thing to consider, do you have a barking dog? And if so, you definitely need to do something about that. Our dog, <laughs> He has a bark collar. I know people frown on that, but they'd frown more if we took him out in public and in an airport and he just barked the whole time. That would be really annoying to everybody around us. So if you have a barker, you know it. So you need to get a bark collar for your pup. Now, once the plane gets in the air, Fletcher does fine. He doesn't bark at all. He just, it just puts him to sleep like a little baby. But know your dog and be prepared to not annoy everybody around you. Okay, so you've done all the preparation. You've done everything that you needed to do. Now it's the day of travel. So now what happens? So you get to the airport, you have your pup or your kitten and you get to the check-in counter. A lot of them have a special services line. If they do, you choose that. That's what you're gonna need. If they don't, when you go to check your luggage, you're gonna need to tell them that you have a pet in cabin and then there will be a fee for Delta. It's $125 each way, so it's not cheap. Once you pay the fee, they're gonna ask you questions about your carrier and your dog breed and all that good stuff, their age. Then they should give you a tag that you sign and fill out for that day and that you need to attach to the carrier. Now, if they forget or they don't give it, ask them because you need this because the gate agent is gonna be looking for this when you board. And then they're going to tell you that your pet must remain in the carrier at all times while in the airport and at the gate. The only exception to this rule is when you go through security. When you're going through security, you're going to have to take the pet out, take the leash off, take all that off, and then send all that through to be x-rayed and then you'll walk through with your pet and then you'll be clear to go and you'll need to put your pet back in the carrier. Now, airports do have pet relief areas, especially if you are in a hub, go to the information desk and ask them where the pet relief area is. Our dog won't use them. He does not use those pet relief areas. He hates them. Some of them even have like fake fire hydrants and fake grass and he just can't stand any of them. So we don't even bother to take him there anymore. But if your dog will use it, that's great because you know what our dog does. He just pees or poops when we're walking. <laughs> <laughs> and, then like, and then we have to do the stop of shame where we're standing there trying to surround the dog poop and somebody picks it up. So yeah, that's lovely. And yeah, I know we're not supposed to have our dog out in... <laughs> He's supposed to stay in the carrier at all times, but I can't carry it. And also a day of flying, it just seems cruel to me to leave him in. But beware, I think in Minneapolis they told us they were really cracking down on that and giving like tickets or fines to people that had their dogs out. So at your own risk. And I do have one more tip. When you are booking your ticket, if you can select your seat, I highly suggest selecting an aisle seat. I don't get to select my seat, but an aisle seat is so much easier to get your dog into rather than having to climb through two others and then get them down underneath the seat. I also recommend going up to the gate agent and asking them if you can pre-board. Some gate agents may not let you. If they don't have a pet, they don't understand maybe. But I have a pet and I'm a gate agent, so I would let you pre-board because it takes a little time to get everything situated. And when you've got that whole line jammed up behind you, you feel kind of bad. <laughs> or when you're making people get out and get in. It's so much more relaxing to pre-board with a pet. So definitely ask. The worst they can say is no. Okay, I think that covers it. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Check out the blog post if you need more details. And be sure to tune in next week if you want to know more about flying internationally with your pet. I will see you guys next time.